Dr. Sandy Watson is a former RCAF officer and was one of Ottawa's finest eye surgeons. There's another accomplishment he wears just as proudly. Sandy Watson was at the center of one of the most remarkable stories in the history of Canadian Olympic hockey. In 1947, I think it was September, the newspapers came out with a startling headline as far as I was concerned. Canada will not participate in hockey at the Winter Olympics of 48. As Europe recovered after World War II, the first post-war Olympic Games were scheduled for San Moritz, Switzerland in 1948. Still angered by the loss to Britain in 1936 and by an ongoing dispute over the definition of amateur, Canada decided not to send a hockey team. And I just couldn't accept the fact that Canada wouldn't somehow or another send a team to the Olympics. Watson had just returned to Ottawa from London, England, where he'd served with the Royal Canadian Air Force. After the war, he organized hockey tournaments in London for airmen waiting to return home. We had entertained teams from Czechoslovakia, from Switzerland, from other countries over there, and I saw their caliber of hockey. And I felt that a good senior team from Canada could compete with them. So, Watson contacted the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association, offering to put together an RCAF team to represent Canada. He said, that would be great, but could you do it? And I said, well, I don't know. There are a lot of people I've got to see. And he said, well, you've got 48 hours. Watson used those 48 hours to contact just about every RCAF base in the country asking them to send hockey players to Ottawa. I remember one young kid coming from Whitehorse, and I happened to be in the dressing room as he was getting dressed. And when he got his pants on and his shirt and sweater, he held up his garter belt and said, what is this for? Watson made the deadline and put together a team. Now they needed a few tune-up matches. They played against McGill University. And as the headline says, McGill Sextet wallops RCA Flyers. And they beat them by a score of seven to nothing. Red Schroeder was playing hockey in a local Ottawa league when he got an urgent call from Sandy Watson. As soon as they lost their exhibition game against McGill University, that's when everything broke loose. Schroeder accepted Watson's invitation to join the team, as did George Mara a star player with a mercantile league in Toronto. I had ruled, sort of initially ruled myself out, but having now a little time to reconsider on every, everything's pointed to, I was turning down a pretty good opportunity, and uh, who knows, we might win a gold medal. And, yeah. So I just thought, I, I'm gonna have a shot at this. Out of nowhere, Sandy produced this team. Strengthened by these and other new additions, the RCAF Flyers prepared to leave for San Moritz. Then, disaster. Our first string goaltender was a fellow named Dick Ball, who played in the Mercantile League for the Varsity Grads. A good goaltender. Just two days before we were due to go, Dick developed a respiratory problem. He was found to have a spot on his lung, and he could not go with the team. So here we were 48 hours before leaving to play in the Olympics and we don't have a first string goaltender. So now what does Sandy do? Well Sandy called George Myra to say where can we get a good goalkeeper for this team? Uh, there was another fellow from that league and uh, Murray Dowie and who was uh, sort of equally rated with Dick as a first-class goalkeeper. George was able to find out this boy's phone number, and it was somewhere around midnight. I phoned him, got him out of bed. He was really slumbering away. He had to ask two or three times who I was. So I took the call, and it was a squadron leader, Sandy Watson, who was calling from Ottawa. 
and said, would you like to go to the Olympics? I said, well, I don't know what's, what's going on. That I work for the Toronto Transportation Commission. There's no way they would let me go over to Europe to play hockey. Undeterred, Watson called Dowie's boss. And he is equally as half asleep as Murray Dowie. I explained the situation to him. So I emphasized that this is something for Canada. This was the big stuff. So he said, sure, I'll let him go. So I phoned Murray back. And he says, OK, you're OK to go, and good luck. And that was it. I was gone. So about noon, there's a knock on my office door. Door opens, and this young, scraggly-looking kid, thin, tall, and I said, yes. He said, oh, I'm Murray Dowie. And I thought, somebody's pulled a, somebody's pulled a joke on me. This can't be this great goaltender I'm hearing about. Two days later, the RCAF Flyers were aboard the Queen Elizabeth sailing for Europe with an untested goalie and gloomy predictions from a hostile press. There was still a lot of uh, criticism uh, around about why, why Canada would send such a, such a haggly-peggly team. I don't think any sports writer in Canada supported us before we left for the Olympics. Most sports writers said we would win a game. But when the games began, the Flyers were unbeatable, running off six victories at a time. Four of the games were shutouts thanks to the goalkeeping of that scraggly kid from Toronto. Gee, it was just as though my heart just expanded. I thought, my God, this guy's not only a goaltender, he's a superlative goaltender. The type of goal I played was a lot different than their goalkeepers. I did a lot of catching of the puck. And he was very quick with his hands. He could go zip, zip, and he'd have it no matter where it was. I think my best part of my game was I could, I could handle the puck, I could catch the puck. Anything was up, I, I, I caught it. His glove would be there. He could move very, very quickly. Dowie wore something else that he says gave him a huge advantage, a cap given to him by the Canadian coaches. Well, playing outdoors and that, of course, you'd either get the sun for one or, or, or two periods, and it was very blinding, the sun, so they decided to help me. They bought me a little ski cap here, and uh, this is what I, I wore. I've kept it all these years. Uh, you'd open up the flap and uh, have the string here, and you would, you would put it on and, uh, let's see now, and tie it up. Hopefully, I guess my head's a little bit, and of course, something's happened to the peak here. It's taken a little bit of a, of a beating, but uh, it was very helpful, I'll tell you. The gold medal came down to Canada's final game against Switzerland. Canada won with Dowie getting his fifth shutout. He allowed just five goals over eight games, still an Olympic record. And I remember going down to the dressing room after the game, and I think I threw my arms around this guy and said, my God, what a performance. You know, you're, you're a great goaltender. He didn't have a bad game. He didn't let a, he didn't let a questionable shot in. He, he stopped everything that was stoppable, which is remarkable. I think as I have got older, I, I, I think it has more of a feeling to me uh, that, gee, I did play an Olympic hockey team. Uh, They'll never take that away from me. I got a gold medal. I don't know if too many of my friends or people in Canada got gold medals. And as for the man whose persistence got Canada to the games? I'm sure I had tears in my eyes. I was emotionally spent. And when the team went down to get their gold medals, I was standing on a little hill and I watched them. And it was a great moment. It was a moment that you can't relive. A moment that you can't relive.